On February 17th of the year 1600, nine years before Galileo developed his telescope, Giordano Bruno was burned at the stake for, among other things, having proposed that there are many worlds, including worlds around other stars. And as astronomers have finally learned in the last two decades, he was right. And that's actually what my research is on. I study planets around other stars. What I'd like to spend the next few minutes talking about is the tremendous distance scales involved in astronomy, the distance from here to the world around other stars. So to ease into this, first I'd like to convince you that the sun is really bright. <laughs> and then I'm going to convince you that the sun is really dim. And then we'll talk some more after that. So sun really bright. The most powerful nuclear weapon ever built was built in 1961 by the Soviets. It was dubbed in the West Tsar Bomba. It was kind of a silly name that actually they ended up using in the Soviet Union. They thought it's not such a bad name. <laughs> and uh, it was a 50 megaton bomb, so that's 50, equivalent to 50 million tons of TNT. It had 3,000 times the explosive yield of the bomb that destroyed Hiroshima, 10 times the explosive yield of all explosives used in World War II combined. But just to go on a little more about Tsar Bomba, uh, it, it was 30 feet long, so a little bigger than this classroom. It weighed 30 tons, 8 feet across in diameter. It was so heavy and so powerful that it had to have a parachute to slow it down on its way down to the ground so that the plane that dropped it could get away without being destroyed. The parachute itself weighed a ton, 1,000, 2,000. The energy output of the sun is equivalent to about 2 billion Tsar Bombas per second. Okay, so how could something this bright be dim? Well, it, the sun isn't dim, it's close to us. But if the sun were as far away as its closest neighbor, the closest sun-like star to the sun, it's called Alpha Centauri. If the sun were that far away, it's a little over four light years away, so that means the distance that light travels in a little over four years. It would be about as bright as a 100 watt light bulb on the Rutgers campus. <laughs> you can even see a 100 watt light bulb at Rutgers, 15 miles away. Well, imagine we had a clear line of sight from here to 15 miles away at Rutgers. It would be really dark, no background lights, no foreground lights, not much in the way of obstruction. We could see it. It would be quite dim. Okay, that, that's how dim the sun's closest neighbor is. So now let's think about some, some other distance scales in astronomy, a little closer to home. So this here is the Earth. So what's this? Pretend it's a sphere. Sorry? Moon. Yes, exactly. And I need a volunteer, someone who wants to be the Earth. Um, I want to be the Earth. <laughs> great. Come on up. And you're the Earth. Gideon, right? I thought it was Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to ask you guys where the grape should go with respect to the grapefruit for it to be the right distance away. Now, I asked this in a class one time. I said, this is the Earth, this is the Moon. Where does the grape go? And the student said, on the Moon. <laughs> <laughs> the, answer, the answer is not on the Moon. Uh, we're shrinking the distance between them down the same way that we shrank their size. So who thinks it should be farther away than here? Show of hands. Farther away. Farther away than here? Okay, this is not going to be as dramatic a demonstration as it usually is. You guys are smart. <laughs> All right, anyone think I should be farther than this? Just watch your step as you go out the window. <laughs> yeah. How many, do you think I should be like... Real far away? Much farther? Okay, let's think about how we can figure this out. So, let's imagine that we are little miniature people on this little miniature Earth. And we look up and we see the little miniature moon somewhere. The miniature moon should look the same size to miniature us as the real moon looks to real us. But of course, the eyes of the miniature versions of us are the same as our, I mean, they're smaller, but they, eyes just see, you know, the 180 degree field of view or whatever, 
180 degrees is 180 degrees no matter what size you are. So that means that the miniature moon should look the same size to Gideon, who is, he holds this right here, so his eyes are on the surface of the miniature Earth. This should look the same size to him as the real moon looks to us. How big does the moon look to us? Let's, everybody hold up your pinky at arm's length. Don't touch anyone's butt. And do you think the full moon is bigger or smaller than your pinky fingernail? Bigger. Bigger, yeah. Everyone always thinks it's bigger. And I, I think it's bigger. I mean, it, it looks like it looks, right, it, and, and you think that it looks bigger on the horizon, too. In fact, I, I had a big argument about this with one of my roommates in college one time, where we actually went out and measured it. Uh, he didn't believe that it actually subtends the same angle, whether it's on the horizon or overhead, because it looks like, it looks like a big pizza pie on the horizon. But it's the same size, and that size is about two-thirds the width of your pinky finger. Uh, how, do, Dave, how do you know how big my pinky finger now is? Well, Turns out that people with wider fingers tend to have longer arms. It's not a perfect relationship, but <laughs> the apparent size of a pinky fingernail doesn't differ too much from person to person. So, let's figure it out. So you put up your pinky fingernail with arm's length and stop me when I get to the distance of the grape is two-thirds. Oh, about there. About there. Cool. That looks about right to me. So that's about 30 Earth diameters away. That's about how far away the moon is. 30 Earth diameters. Now, we send the space shuttle up. We have sent people to the moon. We also send the space shuttle up. Um, this will be our little space shuttle. <laughs> Much bigger, not the scale. The space shuttle is going to fly around here, a few percent of the diameter of the Earth away. The airplanes fly about a distance of one human hair off the surface of this great huh. Mars, where we sent a couple of rovers, it's about the size of an orange, and it's about a mile away. The sun, in this model, is a sphere that's about 30 feet in diameter. It's also around a mile away. And now Alpha Centauri. So Alpha Centauri is also going to be a sphere around 30 feet in diameter. And where is it going to be? It doesn't even fit in the world. In fact, actually, it's a kind of cute example, a little confusing. Alpha Centauri is going to be a 30-foot sphere that's on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if we, if we shrink the stars down so that we can get this, I don't, we still don't really have a great idea of how far away the moon is. We'll now make this, um, and thank you, Gideon, have a seat. Uh, we'll make this be the sun. Alpha Centauri is another great fruit in Los Angeles. So. I hope I've impressed you. <laughs> <laughs> that is how something that's as bright as the sun can appear as dim as it would appear if it were even as far away, just as close as, as its nearest neighbor. I'll stop there. <laughs>